But they didn't have a fucking game plan. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. and I don't really want to bring up Mayweather in this conversation, but I'm just saying by Virgil Hunter. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, his last impression as a trainer to me with, with that last fight, and I just said, Hunter just came off like a guy who was just trying to get a paycheck like Freddie Roach was against with John Pascal versus Kovalev for the second time. They uh-huh. just came off like they would get a paycheck instead of really having a a, a real identity mm-hmm. to go and attack their opponent. Mm-hmm. And for Canelo, you got to have a strategy. you got to fight in the trenches. you got to take advantage of the times where he, he's not attacking you, where he's just trying to take a layoff in the round. See, Canelo's about spurts. He ain't about fighting you for all three minutes. He's about more likely fighting you for 30 seconds or for a minute. Mm-hmm. If I'm Khan, I'm trying to dominate that round for for at least two minutes to two minutes and 20 seconds each round. Trying to outwork him. Yeah. Trying to outwork him. Yeah, you got to do that Ray Leonard versus Hagler shit against Canelo. Mm-hmm. If you're um, Amir Khan. But can Khan stay disciplined? Can he stay unstuck? I mean, can he stay non stubborn Can he keep his hands up? Can he be defensively responsible? Can he leave the pocket when necessary? Can he go <laughs> with one, one twos instead of one two threes? And can he pretty much clinch after he lands a few shots and reset Canelo? If he could do this for 12 rounds, we might get an upset because Khan can make it a fight look so dominant that it's hard to give the other guy a gift decision. <laughs> but the likelihood, Canelo's just too smart. Canelo's just too gifted as mm-hmm. far as for Khan to just dominate him. Mm-hmm. Now, I ask these questions about can Khan do this? But I highly doubt he will do this due to his layoff, for one. Number two, I don't know how he fights at that type of weight. Yeah, and number three. It's always the elephant in the room. That's all. When every time you're going up, every time a fighter going up or going down in weight, you never know how the body going to react. So that's why, yeah, I mean, that's a good assessment because when a fighter goes up and he's not used to fighting at that weight and you don't know how your body going to react in round five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That can be a problem. So yeah, that's it's always so yeah. you we not gonna really know how you're not gonna really know how this fight gonna pan out. You gotta wait till after the after the fifth round. Once the sixth yeah. round come around, once it's like round six and you start looking at the fight and you see that it's still if, if the fight even at six, then you could then you can start saying, hmm, this this is interesting. Yeah. And the other thing I was gonna mention is that with Amir Khan is that can can he dictate the pace of that fight? Mm-hmm. And my thing is fluctuating weight at his age now is dangerous because he's 29 now. He's almost 30. It's dangerous going up and down and weight around that age. Mm-hmm. But, you, quite but, you, but you'd rather go up than down though, around about that age. <laughs> you always rather go up than down. Yeah, but, but, but once he figures out that 155 got some killers, he's pretty much going to want to, I mean, 154 and 160 got killers. Mm-hmm. He pretty much is going to want to go back down the world to wait. And that, then we might see Amir Khan being that 140 guy all over again late in his 140 career mm-hmm. just getting chopped down chopped down and we might see some Roy Jones Jr. type shit <laughs> so I mean Amir Khan needs to reassess reevaluate and possibly call off this fight because what he's about to implement will be very dangerous for him in mm-hmm. the long run because he's 29 because I was 25 I could see if Khan was 27 or 25 years old Going up 155, then going back down mm-hmm. to um, 147. I mean, there's very few fighters that can get away with due to their styles. Mm-hmm. Like Mayweather, for instance. Mm-hmm. Mayweather can go up, but Mayweather only goes up three to four pounds, really. Mm-hmm. And then he, he, he really fights at his 
walking weight. Khan is not fighting at his walking weight. So this, so, 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 so this catch weight one fifty five, right? Yeah, but I think Amir Khan. Gonna, I don't think Amir Khan gonna come in at one fifty five. Man, I think he. I think he, he made. That I, tells me he's all about speed in that fight, man. Yeah, I think I don't think he's gonna come in at one fifty five. I think I think he pay I think he may come in like one fifty two. But he needs to he needs to be strong enough to keep Canelo off of him, man. The only way Khan can do that is he's gonna have to jab Canelo at, at the stomach. Mm -hmm. If he ain't jabbing their stomach to take some win off of Canelo, Canelo's just gonna bully him. Because Mayweather we came all in know Canelo's really a bully. Mayweather came in at about one fifty, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, 151, 151? around that range. Oh, okay. But either way, man, Mayweather has the skill set to to easily outbox Canelo. Yeah. That's what Mayweather does. Yeah. Khan can box, but the problem is Khan ain't got physicality. Mayweather knows how to be elusive inside range, outside range, and mid range. Mm -hmm. And Mayweather got fast hands. Mayweather knows when to use his feet. Mayweather knows when to use his his feet. And Mayweather has reflexes out of this world. That's why he beat Canelo. So I don't know if Khan can do that. Oh, okay. All in one all in one package. All in one either package, way, man. Yeah. I mean, but either way, man, like like I seen how Mayweather fight in one fifty four before the Canelo display. Mm -hmm. I saw him do it against De La Hoya, I saw him do it against Cotto. Um, the the De La Hoya um, audition was not that great by Mayweather. The Cotto audition, Mayweather didn't look his best, but he still outperformed Miguel Cotto. And the Canelo audition, the third time, which was the charm, Mayweather looked at his he looked at his best fight at one fifty plus. But either way, man, Amir Khan, this is his first audition, and I don't know, man, like. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's, it is. It is a lot of unanswered questions with American. It's, it's too many. It's too many unanswered questions to see to say definitively what he, what he, what what he is going to do. I, I mean, I only can say what I think he's going to do based off uh, his skill set. Now, I can't say he's going to do something that I ain't never seen before. So I, I have to go off of what I seen. So, based on what I've seen from. His, from what he did from 140 to 147, I can I can say that you know he can do those things. But it is it is a um it's it's a, it's, it's it's interesting. I I can say that I can say it's very yeah. it's a very interesting fight, man. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna watch it, you know, and I'm gonna see what's gonna go down. But yeah, um, any closing arguments? One more thing. One more thing. Now with the Keith Thurman Sean Porter fight, Porter is going to have to go to that body. Porter is going to have to fight Keith Thurman. And he's going to have to not give Keith Thurman any type of space, period. And he's going to have to win each round Henry Armstrong style if he's going to have a chance. I mean, Keith Thurman's going to look like Lou Amber, and Porter's going to look like Henry Armstrong. The problem is, Porter needs to utilize that jab and he doesn't really do well using the jab and I just want to see if Kenny Porter can implement identity or a strategy that can make this a, a fight where us boxing fans say like I don't know that fight was either a draw or Sean Porter really won that fight I mean Keith Thurman hasn't really been in a close fight yet to be quite honest with you mm -hmm. and I mean, I've seen what Thurman did against Thunder. I've seen what Thurman has done against Colossal. I've seen Thurman fight guys that come inside of him. But this is my first opponent in seeing Keith Thurman against, you know, a black fighter. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, Sean Porter knows him and Thurman knows Porter. So, and I know well, Thurman is a better fighter than he was when Thurman was sparring with him, hanging with him, and all that other stuff. But at the same time, I'm going by who who got the better ring IQ, who had who utilizes better arsenal as far as offensive output and defensive responsibility. And 
and I give all those accolades and advantages to Keith Thurman. And Sean Porter just wanted to show me, can he just fight that motherfucker? Because that's the only <laughs> chance he really has because boxing him will make him look even more foolish than he did against Kell Brook. Mm-hmm. Sean Porter cannot box Keith Thurman. He must fight Keith Thurman to have a chance in this fight. And that's my opinion. And that's the only strategy I see of him winning the fight. Oh. And if he doesn't do that, then him and um, Kenny might eventually become gatekeepers to certain fighters. So he, he, he better go balls to walls in this fight. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with you on that. If he don't win this fight, he's gonna be a gatekeeper. I don't. Now, nah, Sean Porter is not even close to being a gatekeeper yet. Not even close. I think Devin Alexander is the gatekeeper now of 147. Him and Zab Judah is, is the two gatekeepers. Uh, Sean Porter. Sean, Sean Porter, Porter. Sean Porter. Sean Porter must make this a fight where it takes some years off of Keith Thurman's body. Mm-hmm. He must make it that type of fight, or. This is just going to be one of those fights that Porter failed once again at the biggest stage of his division. Whenever it came to a big time fight at a high caliber level, mm-hmm. he against real 147 pounders, Porter loses again. Mm-hmm. So when he fights guys that are fully into that weight, and that's their natural weight, you know, he lost to Kill Brook. Can he prove that he could beat a guy that's fully fledged as a welterweight and keep Thurman? And he's going to have to get physical with Thurman to have a chance. But boxing him, he has no chance in hell, man. Not why I saw with him against um, guys like Diaz, or, or Alfonso Gomez, or even a little bit against Adrian Broner. And uh, I'm saying to myself, like, yo, this guy's going to have to fight for, for him to win it get somebody that skill set. So, all in all, we we shall see. Hopefully, this will be a fight where we get to either see a knockdown, a knockout, or just go like, oh, my God, was, was that fight well worth the wait? I'm hoping it goes like that. And we should have talked more about this fight a lot longer than we did with Khan and Canelo, but Khan is such an amusement for for all of those boxing fans. We're just trying to see what chance he had. I don't think I don't think we would have been talking like that about if it was Bradley versus Canelo. Mm-hmm. Why? Because Bradley doesn't amuse him as much as Khan. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Man. I'm a big Bradley fan. Do you know that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So let me give you um. What you think about Bradley Pacquiao too? Three. I don't know how to, that fight is going to go because I don't I don't know how Bradley can take as the Teddy Atlas fight. I know what kind of Bradley I would see with a Joe Diaz fighter. So I don't know if Bradley is going to utilize his left hooks more, utilize his jab more. So intelligently step back and, and counter Pacquiao and glide in the pocket and exchange with him at times where it's necessary and allow Pacquiao to make mistakes. I I don't know how this fight is going to go. I don't think it's going to be like the last fight, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it's going to be like the first fight. I don't, Teddy Atlas is such a good teacher that he might show a little wrinkle to Bradley about Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. That Pacquiao might not have seen before with Bradley. That might expose Pacquiao, or Pacquiao might have something to, for Bradley to be far with for Frankie Gomez, who's, who's a very good prospect. Mm-hmm. And um, and Pacquiao might have something for Bradley too. I just hope these two motherfuckers fight one another. Like enough with this boxing shit because <laughs> y'all styles, y'all styles make it an ugly fight. It's time to fight one another. Who's going to win this feud between the two? Mm-hmm. This is y'all's fucking legacy on the line. Mm-hmm. The Pacquiao wins. It's just another feud he wins. And people are going to be like, that's Manny Pacquiao. If Bradley wins, people are going to be like, this this 